we go again, our fourth week and our second session of our fourth week. So I believe we're going live. I believe, is that correct, Shelby, next week? Yep, we are going to have the first session available on um, October 13th, Fabulous. which will probably be three weeks before this video airs. <laughs> All right, great. That'll be tremendous. And then we'll hope to have our full... Uh, 10 week, 20 sessions, so we'll try to get them in there even if we have to sneak in a couple of other days. Uh, one thing I did want to remind folks, and especially if you've been doing a lot of stretching, is to take a few minutes to just do that little bit of echoing or rebounding, or you're going to really shake it up. I know I look ridiculous and I don't care, as most of you know, uh, and that's just fine. But let the body let go. And I don't mean to do this just for a second. We've been trying to add our high intensity intervals for two minutes, two or three times a day. And that can be any kind of interval, particularly when you're getting the arms moving up over or around the uh, heart area. But shake it out. It allows your body to come back into some sense of organization. As you do your standing poses and stack the body, because we're going to be moving down from Tadasana to a down dog, to plank, uh, through uh, standing forward bend, Uttanasana, and various variations of that, and then to a couple of different um, lunges. And again, have some props for safety. Chair wall, and I'll show you some other ways that you can uh, practice down dog if it's a little too much for your wrists. But what's your normal way you stand? Here was my normal way to stand. So you can see why then I'm going to have a short side, a long side, a little cock to one hip is probably going to roll forward, and a pronated leg. And it took a wonderful myofascial release practitioner one session to bring this leg out of pronation almost completely. It still has a tendency to want to go that way, but through mindfulness and strengthening, I can work on proper integrated body alignment. And that is something I love to do besides yoga. And I try to integrate it into my yoga as well as in my body work practice and lifestyle uh, wellness practice. Another technique into good posture, and I love Jean Couch. Uh, she wrote the Runner's Book of Yoga or Yoga Running, a couple of editions. And she has the Balance Institute in California. She's amazing and she'll bring new life to your body and your skin. But she does these cute little techniques called heel scoops. And you're really just scooping the heel in. But you keep the toes engaged into the earth and you move the leg as a whole. So ankle, knee, and hip. And you're scooping in the heels. This spreads the toes so you have happy monkey toes. Or if you look at most of children or babies, baby toes. And it helps recreate the arch. Look at how much difference you can get when you work on this heel scoop. So finding the four points of the feet. Under the big toe mound, baby toe mound, inner heel, and outer heel. Sink them into the earth. Heel scoop. Legs parallel. Activate the energy. Activate the muscles around the, the, the feet, the ankles. Draw it up, activate the quads, lifting the quads, gently rolling open the hips, core is on, shoulders down the back, and you are solid. Tadasana, mountain pose. So I have my wall here. I'm going to be a little careful as I lift my hands up into Hastasana. So I'm reaching as much up as I'm reaching down. So I'm coming from my core, my heart, my dantian, and going in two directions. And the way to practice this is heaven and earth. So you just take one hand up and one hand down, and you're pushing the heavens away and the earth away. It's an amazingly easy but very productive stretch. So heaven and earth, and shake it out. So that I can just get things moving along the side bodies. I have a sticky, sticky mat today. So I'm going to move up into Hastasana. 
I'm going to flow down into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Now you can come into these poses any way you, you need or you like that's safe for you. But you can walk yourself out into downward facing dog. You can have a wide stance. You have your hands activated, but my wrists are not engaged in the earth. Elbow eyes forward. Lengthen that down dog. But you can have the knees bent. You can be playful in your down dog. Keep lifting the belly up and in. And drop those knees. You're pushing the arm energy through the hands. Ah, one leg at a time, if you like. Adho Mukha Savasana. And then rolling forward into plank pose. Hands under shoulders. Reaching through the heels. The head is neither hanging nor looking up. It's an extension of the spine. Belly button up and in. Get glutes engaged. I'm not an old gray mare, nor I am in modified down dog. You're a plank. And yes, it's work. Knees down. Come down through child's pose for a little break. Use a support if you like. Whatever works best for you. And take a break. Now, if it's too much work to be in plank pose with the full arms, you can do a couple modifications with hands together, the lower two fingers are extended, elbows just inside the shoulders, and come into your plank here. This is still very strengthening. You're pushing that forearms into the earth. Your booty is not up in the air, nor is it laying down on the ground. It's a plank. Hands can be parallel. This is still great work. You can use a block to give you feedback or support here. So this is also a nice tool and you can kind of squeeze everything to keep squeezing those scapulas down the back, lifting the belly up and in, and just do this for, oh, 10 or 15 minutes. No, <laughs> a few minutes goes a long way with planks, but it creates strength and stability pretty quickly. So we're gonna go from plank to down dog to up dog and we're gonna come down through a couple different um, lunges. So this is a little more vigorous practice, but you can pick them apart, pull them apart, do one at a time, and then we'll show you a way that you can begin to stretch out the hands using the wall and some blocks as well. So we're in tabletop. You can come up into your down dog from tabletop as well. Elbow eyes forward. Toes out to the sides of the mat, up and in, roll through plank, good, back through down dog, now you can come into a lunge a variety of ways, you can step the leg forward and adjust. So that you're nice and comfy. I like having both hands to the inside to start. And then I drop my back knee. You have your wall or your chair here for stability. So that's a big stretch way to come into lunge. But any lunge really helps open the hips, bring energy into the hips. But you're still strengthening this core uh, and perineal floor area. So my hands are to the inside, full lunge. They are on either side, and here's where lots of folks will like to have blocks, and it's very helpful, either fists or hands, so that you're not overstretching and, and congesting the area around the neck, throat, and thyroid. So drop the back, uh, knee to the ground for low lunge, 
Curl the toe under in the back. High lunge. And you can just do a few dips here. And it's just a very luscious feeling, I think. I like lunges. A lot of energy going down through the big toe mound and the inner um, heel. So you can come back through down dog. Or you can stretch forward and get a nice little runner stretch. Bring the foot around and take a break again into child's pose. We are starting tabletop, toes out, curled under, reach the booty into the heavens. And you don't have to have a big giant down dog. This is good. It can be stretched out more. Elbow eyes forward, belly up, and roll through to plank. Good. Feet can be together, feet can be wide. There's a variety of ways people do planks. And into down dog. And if you don't want to come into your lunge the way we did before, just walk back. Take it a little easy. Reach one foot forward. Use the chair safely to come into your lunge. In lunges, we would like to have the knee over or slightly behind the ankle. And why not use a prop if you need one? So here's a modification or a variation of a lunge that feels very safe having a chair. There's a lot of things I can do now. Lift the back leg, drop it. This is a lot of work. Lift, drop. I can stretch an arm down, up and reach back, and then open. I can use the wall and come across for a big stretch. So having props is handy. Again, you can have the blocks and come into full lunge, low lunge, full lunge. And a nice way to come out of your lunge is to straighten the back leg. There's a little hop there. Cars about to nasana, roll around, and just hang into double leg stretch. This feels good. You can soften the knees if you need. You can use the chair if you need to practice whatever works for you. You can even do your down dogs this way. So there's a lot of variations you can do safely. You can even do the Watusi. <laughs> Eventually, you're going to open those legs as wide as you can. Fingertips in line with the toes. Reach the hands back and rest the head on the earth. You can use props here. You can use blocks. And then you can heel toe, heel toe, all the way back up into Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Knees can be soft if they need. You can roll up like a ragdoll. Still keep that core on. Or you can engage, and I mean engage, in the core and reach back along the spine, reach up. To Hastasana. So, a pretty powerful short sequence. We're going to come down again through down dog to plank, hold the plank, child's pose, and then take a break. So, inhale up. And again, my wall is close here, so I'm reaching a little carefully. Exhale down. Uttanasana, standing forward bend. Walk forward. Step back into your down dog. Bring that belly in and up. Elbow 
elbow eyes forward. Roll forward on the toes into your plank. Play with plank. You'll be surprised. You may not be able to hold it long to start, but in a few days you'll be holding it longer and longer. Drop the knees. Slide back into down dog. I mean, into child's pose. Remember the first uh, oblique child's pose we did this morning? You could stretch that one arm over. Rest the head down. Feel that nice side lateral stretch. And then if you want, you can draw the hips slightly over to that space for a little more stretch. It feels good. Coming through center. And working to the other side. the hips towards the long arm side. Back through center and up. Excellent. So the, the motions of the spine, we talked about forward and you can go backwards. Back bends. You can go side to side. You can twist to each side, and you can reach up and down. So rooting the sits bones as the, shush the crown chakra reaches up, you're stretching the shishuna. So the spine has a lot of motions that it can do with the joy. Sometimes it's handy to have the blocks against a wall for a little support. And if that helps you practice, or the chair like we just demonstrated, I'm going to move it out of the way here. But the wall not going anywhere. And it can give you a little extra safety for the wrists. Again, don't be on a slippery surface. Have the mat extended correctly. And you can practice your down dog this way. So you're not on the wrists. My mat is actually sliding on the carpeting. <laughs> but my belly is coming up and in. So it's just one more way to use some type of feedback support. Also, if you happen to have tight arches or fascia or plantar fasciitis issues, a couple things you can do to practice that. And we'll do a couple sessions where we review different things we've done as well. But it, it isn't easy for everybody to roll back on their heels. And my heels don't want to go to the earth here either. But I can roll my mat up. Now if I separate my knees, I can. And that's one way to stretch, but it does stretch different parts. So just giving yourself some support to come down on. You can practice apanasana or different poses. And I could even use something more. So why not use what we have? Until you can begin to stretch out. Because you want your chest up and high. Open for these poses. Apanasana. Apanasana. So nice twist, balance, and twist. Good. We're going to end with a little side twist again. I'm curious how it will be. Shelby, you might want to see if we're on the earth, will it show us here? I think it will. But we're going to do the banana.
<laughs> so we'll show it in this longitudinal axis, and then next week we'll look at it from the side so you can see. Again, some folks may need something for just the back of their head so that their chin isn't up in the air, but their cervical spine is long. So get what you need. Come down. If you have hair barrettes in, please be cautious or remove them. And lengthen the lower spine. Stretch the legs out long, feet together. Take a moment just to be here. So this could be a version of Half Moon, Ardrich and Drasana. We tend to like to call it banana. <laughs> and it includes the top half of your body and the bottom half of your body. It can be a much bigger stretch than you realize, so go slow particularly if you have SI issues. So just by walking the legs over, you're moving them away from the midline. You're beginning to create this half moon here. That's a pretty big stretch. But you have this floor for support and feedback. So here's just the lower half of the torso. You can enhance the stretch by bringing the outside foot, resting the heel into the toes. That enhances the stretch. You can also add the arms up above, and they slowly walk to one side. And this is such a big stretch, more than you realize. But if you do have disc issues, you just saw me back off a little bit uh, because I can feel that it was going to be too much. So it doesn't take much at this angle. I'm keeping my core engaged. That's going to protect the SIs on the backside, the PSISs. And enjoy the stretch. You may be able to go further in a few moments, and maybe this is plenty. Come back to center one body section at a time. I'm going to swoop the arms down, wiggle my torso to neutral, release the foot, and bring them to neutral, and slide the lumbar whoop, long. I can, yeah, I can feel that in my SI, so I'm going to be very careful, but that's one of my areas I have to work on. And a little knee stretch here. So again, it doesn't matter which side you start with. You can just do the top part of the torso over. And this is a lovely stretch. If you want to add the legs, inch them over a little bit at a time. Give yourself Time to move into that space. Keeping the core on, you'll feel the safety that it provides. So lateral flexion of the spine. And then the pause is as important as the pose. Remember, we have discussed that. Give it a minute. If you have SI issues, you can always have the knees bent. That provides a softer psoas and a little less pressure on the uh, sacral joints. We're going to end with a very slow, mindful, subtle yoga technique, which is bilateral, slow motion to activate the slow twitch muscles. It's as if there's a string that the hand is a marionette, a marionette uh, uh, 
guide of the, the foot or the leg. So bilateral, the same side. Conlateral, you're moving the opposite sides together. You can be playful, create your own motions, but conlateral. And you can bring both arms up with the leg. And then cross lateral so that you're crossing the midline of the body. And then relax. Check in, see how the body feels. These subtle yoga techniques developed by Christine Colberry Weber at Subtle Yoga and Asheville is a slow yoga technique. And as I talk, I'm going to, here's Khan on the opposite side. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but you're activating different parts of the brain, the corpus callosum, the white matter through the Mohawk region when you do these slow, mindful bilateral here. And again, if that's too much on your SI joint, have this knee bent as you're bringing it up and down. Bilateral, slow, mindful. I can even go slower. Conlateral. Parallel. And cross body. Crossing the midline. And doing these in a very methodical, slow fashion with the breath throughout your yoga practice has a neuroplasticity effect. It enhances or turns off different sections of the brain. So you can change your brain by changing your body. You can reduce your stress cortisol levels and enhance stress resiliency. You can enhance the Mohawk region of the brain, the white matter where the glial or mirror cells are. You can reduce the amygdala, that, those two little tiny places in the brain that create this fight, flight, and too much cortisol cycling, and they can get big and angry and inflamed. Or you can reduce the amygdala and enhance the hippocampus. So we can change regularly ourselves, our approach to the rest of the community, our wellness and health through our actions. So while you enjoy Shavasana here, I'm going to roll to my side. Come up to sitting. Find a nice, comfortable seat. And I encourage you to find your most comfortable and resilient corpse pose. Practice your four, seven, eight breath, or your long, slow inhalations and exhalations. Three to five minutes is barely enough. Three to five minutes a couple times a day is better than nothing and it's certainly a step in the right direction. But let's really create a resilient body and mind. So inhale slowly. Exhale. And let 
let your breath return to its normal pattern of breath. Inhale fully and deeply. Stretch your arms and legs. Open your eyes and take in your surroundings. And when you're ready, roll to your side of choice. Bring your hands into Namaste hands. Thumbs reaching into the heart center, fingers reaching out. We're right between the third and fourth chakras, the solar plexus in the heart, your ego, your seat of creativity, passion and your center of compassion, love, forgiveness. Sense and feel your breath of life rising and falling underneath your forearms. Your breath, unique just to you, Filling your body, taking away everything you don't need on the exhalation. Bring your hands to your third eye, your seat of intuition, connection with your ancestors and spirit guides, your sixth chakra. Open yourself to the possibilities of this chakra that you do have connections generationally. And float the hands out to the side, palms up to receive the gifts the universe has. Om Shanti Shanti. Shanti peace. Namaste. Thank you for joining us today, and we'll be here again next week for two more sessions and be checking in again to see how everybody is doing. How are we doing here, Shelby? <laughs>